Hello everyone, this is Asra Sultana, Assistant Professor in Triple Department, working in ISA Regional College. So today's class, I am going to continue with the topic of Flexible AC Transmission System. So Flexible AC Transmission System, PAX Technologies, uh, will open up new opportunities for controlling power and enhancing the usable capacity of present, new and upgraded lines. These opportunities will arise through the ability of fax controller to control the interrelated parameters that will govern the operation of transmission systems including series impedance, shunt impedance, current, voltage, phase angle and the damping of oscillations at various frequencies. So we have seen the uh, what are the uh, fax controller, what are the various types of fax controller. So, there are four types that is series, shunt, combined series, series, combined series, shunt. Okay, we have seen the diagram also where we can see the what are the various types of uh, various types of tax controllers. Series, shunt, combined series, series, combined series, shunt. Okay. So, uh, what are what will the advantages of fax controllers? It will provide secure and controllable tie line connections to neighboring utilities and regions and thereby decreasing overall generation reserve requirements on both the sides. Uh, and it will, it is flexible, and it will con uh, it will have a control of power flow in transmission corridors, corridors by controlling line impedance, angle, and voltage. And it will prevent cascading outages by limiting the impacts of faults and equipment failures. Uh, it, uh, by using fast devices, stability will be increased, and optimum power flow for certain objectives, environmental benefits, upgrade of lines. And it will reduce loop flows, increase the loading capability of lines to their thermal capabilities, including short term and seasonal. Okay, and it will provide greater flexibility in setting new generation and the increase of supply. Uh, loadability of lines will be increased, and maintenance cost will be reduced by using fax controllers. So, so where we can apply these fax devices. Uh, we can apply these in power flow control, increase of transmission capability, voltage control, stability improvement, power quality improvement, power conditioning, reactive power compensation, uh, flicker mitigation, etc. So when we see the uh, basic uh, fax controllers, series shunt, combined series series and combined series shunt. So, series controllers uh, will be a variable impedance such as capacitor, reactor, etc. or a power electronics based variable source. Okay. So, as long as the voltage is in phase quadrature with the line current, series controller will supply or consume variable reactive power. Series controllers are of two types TCSC and SSC. that is, high star control series capacitors, TCSC, and static synchronous series compensator. Then shunt controller we have seen. Shunt controller will be a variable impedance, variable source or a combination of these. So all shunt controllers will inject current into the system at the point of connection. If the current inject current is in phase quadrature with the line voltage, shunt controller will supply or consume variable reactive power. Okay. Any other phase relationship will involve real power also. So shunt controllers are of two types, SVC and stat form, static wire compensator and static synchronous compensator. Then combined series series and combined series shunt we have seen. So combined series series can be a combination of a separate series controller which is controlled in a coordinated manner in a multi-line transmission system or it, keep, it could be a unified controller in which series controllers will provide independent series reactive compensation for each line but also transfer real power among the lines via power link. Combined series shunt are uh, nothing but a combination of series, separate series and shunt controllers which will be controlled in a coordinated manner or unified power flow controller with series and shunt elements. Okay. Now let us see about the so SVC also we have seen in the previous class. Okay. SVC is classified as TCR, TSC, and TSR. Okay. We have seen uh, them uh, uh, in detail. Now let us see about the thyristor control series capacitor that is TCSC. So TCSC is a capacitive reactance compensator which will consist of a series capacitor band which is shunted by two thyristors controlled reactor in order to provide a smoothly variable series capacitive reactance as shown in the figure. Okay, these are the TCSC. This is a current limiting, limiting reactor. This is a voltage. Okay, VC.
So one thyristor will carry current in positive half cycle and other thyristor will carry the current in the negative half cycle. In each half cycle, when the thyristor is fired, it will conduct current for the rest of half cycle till current is zero. So thyristor capacitor is short circuited during on time, that is VC is equal to zero, and current will be conducted by the thyristor. So thyristor current is conducted by the capacitor during on time, and capacitor voltage is VC. So same process is repeated in the other half cycle. So measured voltage VC can be controlled for any given current, which is equivalent of reducing the capacitance as C is equal to VC by I. So in this, capacitance can be controlled smoothly by adjusting the firing angle. So we are adjusting the firing angle. And in the positive half cycle and in the negative side half cycle, thyristor will carry the current. So this means final control and wide range over capacitance series reactor is used in controlling the line. See TCR reactance XL is equal to uh, XL of alpha is equal to XL pi by pi minus 2 alpha minus sine 2 alpha. So reactance of capacitor will be XC is equal to minus 1 by 2 pi FC. So this figure is showing a uh, reactance characteristics curve of TCS device drawn with respect to alpha. So curve is uh, divided into three regions such as inductive region, capacitive region and resonance region. Okay. Inductive, capacitive and resonance as you can see inductive, capacitive and resonance region. So inductive and capacitive regions are working regions and resonance region is a non-working region. Non -working. Resonance region means it is a non-working here. This one is not, not working, and whereas inductive and capacitive are the working regions. Uh, so, no, no, this non working region is formed between inductive and capacitive regions, and nearer to the resonance region, there is a large change in reactance for a small change in firing angle. So, for different regions, for different region, different firing angles are available. If the firing angle is lying between uh, bit less than or equal to 90 and uh, gray, gray, less than or equal to alpha limit and uh, less than or equal greater than or equal to 90, then it is inductive region. So 92 alpha limit and this is the alpha uh, CL CLI to 180 degrees capacitive region and uh, so resonance region is alpha lying between lower limit and uh, inductive limit and capacitive limit that is alpha L, uh, LM and alpha CLM. Okay. Now let us see STATCOM, static synchronous compensator. Static synchronous compensator is a static synchronous generator which is operated as a shunt connected static wire compensator whose capacity or inductive output current can be controlled independent of the AC system voltage. So this is a one line diagram of a uh, Statcom. Statcom, like its conventional counterpart SVC, controls the transmission voltage by reactive shunt composition. It can be based on a voltage source or current source converter. So, one line diagram of Statcom is shown in the figure and it is based on a voltage source converter and a current source converter. So, normally a voltage source converter is preferred for most converter based fax controllers. Statcom can be designed to be an active filter to absorb system harmonics. Okay, so first one is statcom based on voltage source uh, converter and second one is uh, statcom based on current source converter. So combination of statcom and any energy source to supply or absorb power is called static synchronous generator SSG. The energy source may be a battery, flywheel, superconducting magnet, large DC source, uh, large DC storage capacitor or uh, any other rectifier or inverter etc. Now let us see the Next one, static series synchronous compensator. So, triple SC is a static synchronous generator operated without an external energy source as a series compensator whose output voltage is in quadrature if and controllable independently of the line current for the purpose of increasing or decreasing the overall reactive voltage drop across the line and thereby controlling the transmitted electric power. So it is one of the uh, triple SC is one of the most important fax controller. Uh, it is a series connected controller. Though it is like Statcom, but its output voltage is in series with the line. So it is like a Statcom except that the output AC voltage is in series with the line. Uh, it will control the voltage across the line and hence its impedance. So this is a voltage source converter triple SC shown in the figure.
So battery storage is uh, superconducting magnetic storage can also be connected in series with the controller to inject a voltage in favor of variable angle in series with the light. Now let us see the UPFC that is Unified Power Flow Controller. UPFC is a combination of uh, Stratcom and uh, LSC, okay? Uh, which are coupled by a common DC link to allow bi-directional flow of real power between the series output terminals of the triple C and the shunt output terminals of Stratcom. These are controlled to provide a uh, concurrent real and reactive series line composition without an external energy source. So, UPFC by means of uh, angularly unconstrained series voltage injection is able to control concurrently or simultaneously or selectively the transmission line voltage impedance angle or alternatively the real and reactive line flows. UPFC may also provide independently controllable shunt reactive composition. So this is the model of a UPFC shown in the figure. So additional storage such as super connecting diamond connected to the decoding via an electronic interface that would provide the means of further enhancing the effectiveness of UPFC. Control exchange of real power with an external source such as storage is much more effective in controlling the system dynamics than modulation of power transfer within the system. So this is a complete control of controlling the active and reactive power flow through the line and under the line voltage control. Let us see the other fact devices. These are not there in your syllabus, uh, but we have to know what are these uh, fact devices. So, first one is thyristor control phase shifting transformer TCPST. So, this is also called as thyristor control phase angle regulator. Phase shifting transformer controlled by thyristor switches to give a rapidly variable phase angle. Okay. Next is uh, thyristor control voltage regulator TCVR. Thyristor controls transformer which can provide variable in phase voltage with continuous control. Next is interface power controller IPC. Series connected controller of active and reactive power consisting in each phase of inductive and capacitive branches subjected to separately phase shifted voltages. And active and reactive power can be set independently by adjusting the phase shifts or balance impedances using mechanical or electronic switches. <coughs> Next is thyristor control braking resistor TCBR. It is a shunt connected thyristor switch resistor which is controlled to aid stabilization of a power system or to minimize power isolation of a generating unit during a disturbance. Next is thyristor control voltage limiter TCVL. Thyristor switch metal oxide varistor used to limit the voltage across its terminals during transient conditions. So let us see the comparison between uh, Stratcom and SPC. So SPC will generate more harmonics than uh, Stratcom and during transients, performance will be slow for SPC and reliance is fast for Stratcom. SPC will be acting as a variable acceptance and Stratcom is acting as a voltage source behind the reactants. SPC will operate in any capacity region and uh, Stratcom will operate in both capacity and capacity regions. SPC is sensitive to the transmission system harmonic resonance and the stack is sensitive to the transmission system harmonic resonance. Operation is difficult for a weak AC system in SVC and for with a weak system it can maintain a stable voltage, STATCOM. SVC has smaller dynamic range whereas STATCOM has higher dynamic range. Okay students, I hope uh, 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 you are clear with the, all the topics of uh, power system operation and control subject. So, we have completed all five units of uh, power system operation and control subject. If you have any doubts, you can ask me students. So, first unit was dealing with the load flow studies. Uh, second was dealing with the economic operation of power system. Third was uh, load frequency control. Fifth was power system stability. And fourth was power system stability. Fifth was Reactive power generation, okay, by uh, automatic voltage regulators, fax devices, okay. So out of all units, fifth unit is very very small. And uh, first unit uh, in the in first unit we have studied about uh, how to formulate a wipers and uh, tap changing transformer. We have seen 
formulation of load flow problem uh, by Gossida, Newton, Ramsey, decoupled and fast decoupled methods. So all these four methods will have the algorithm and the flow chart, okay, uh, to find the solution of a load flow. Okay, and we have seen the comparison of different load flow methods also, which is, which is very very important, students. You may expect the question of comparison of load flow methods in short or long questions. Next, uh, economic third, second unit, economic operation of power system. We have seen input output curves, heat rate curve, incremental cost curves. Okay, then we have seen incremental cost criteria, neglecting transmission losses with and without generator limits, BMN coefficients, very very important. Uh, then economic operation including transmission losses. So various uh, numericals are there in, there in second unit which I have already discussed and in the intermediate exam also we have seen that uh, I have given one numerical okay. Then third unit is load frequency control, governor characteristics, regulation of two generators, coherency, concept of control area. So we have seen single area case, two area case both and we have seen the development of model for single area and two area case. And a few definitions are very very important like flat frequency control, flat Thailand frequency control, Thailand bias control. All these uh, you may get for short questions. Advantages of pool operation important for short. Okay. Then in fourth unit we have seen power system stability. What are the various stability steady state transient dynamic? The definitions we have seen. Okay. Very very important for short. And calculation of steady state limit. Uh, synchronous machine models with and without saliency we have seen okay equal area criteria very very important students for long questions and short as well application of equal area criteria swing equation very important for long and short step by step solution of swing equation very important factor affecting transient stability important for the short order with knowledge mathematical formulation of all the problem okay uh, and uh, Critical clearing angle and critical clearing time, you may expect uh, a derivation or a problem based on that topic. And fifth unit, as I have said, only few topics are there. All topics are important, students. You may expect any question, okay, on tax control, as an ECNC stack or UPFC or automatic voltage regulator, also you may expect. Thank you, students, for watching the videos. I hope uh, uh, you understood all the concept of power system operation and control. If you have any doubt, you can ask me anytime. Thank you, students, for watching the video.